Today we're talking choosing the right fly reel on this episode of Q&A Friday on Fly Fish University TV. Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Q&A Friday on Fly Fish University TV. My name is Jordan Ulrich and I'm super excited about today's question. It comes from Curtis in Seattle, Washington and he asks, I'm looking at getting a new fly reel but there's so many on the market that I literally don't know which one to choose. Could you shed some insight on this? And the answer is absolutely. So I'm out on the water right now and there's a couple things to really factor in when you're purchasing a fly reel. Okay, the first one is the size of the reel, right? So how big of a reel do you need for the type of fishing that you're gonna be doing? What type of fishing are you going to be using this for? Okay, so one thing that's important is if you need to know how much backing you're going to need on the reel, you need to make sure that the capacity is sufficient for the type of fishing you're gonna be doing and the size of the rod that you're gonna be fishing, okay? That kind of brings us to the next point is the weight of the reel. So you have to think, is it going to balance itself properly Right? Is it going to balance itself properly on the rod that I'm going to be fishing? A rod that, or a reel that's too light or a reel that's too heavy um, can lead to another set you know, of problems. They can be, especially a reel that's too heavy can be very cumbersome uh, when it comes to casting. The next thing to consider is the arbor size, okay? So this is the arbor right here. Uh, let's see if I could just take this apart for a second. So you can see the arbor on the inside of the reel here, okay? So that's where the line is actually gonna get wrapped onto. So typically a larger arbor reel is going to allow you to pick up, it's gonna, it's gonna make pick up and retrieve a little bit easier. You're going to just get more line in per crank. The next couple things are, do you want a click pawl or a disc drag reel? I'm a fan of disc drag reels because I can adjust the tension, okay, at which that line is going to be coming off the reel. Uh, click pawl reels are nice. They are very applicable in many scenarios. I know lots of people that don't like disc drag reels. They actually like to fish the click pawl. Uh, it's a lot of personal preference as well, depending on the type of fishing, the type of species that you're going after, okay? It's important to note too, in trout fishing, a lot of times your reel is simply a place to hold the line, whereas something like tarpon fishing, salmon, steelhead, uh, the reel becomes very important because you need to have the stopping power uh, to put the brakes on some of those bigger fish that are gonna end up taking big, long runs that are sometimes, you know, one, two, 300 yards at a time. Uh, the last two things for me to factor in would be auditory and visual, right? So I have to have nice visuals on the reels that I fish. I need, they need to look good to me. Uh, they need to look nice nice to me. And the last thing is the auditory, okay? I like to know that the reel that I'm fishing, when I've got a nice fish on the other end and it's pulling line off the reel, uh, I just need to know that, that it's going to sound nice for me. So I hope that this answers a few questions when it comes to picking out the right fly reel because uh, there's, again, there's so many on the market. You can, it's easy to get kind of decision paralysis a little bit. But uh, Curtis, I hope that this answers your question when it comes to choosing a new fly reel. And I look forward to seeing you on next week's episode of Flyfish University TV.